<laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm not an accountant. My, <laughs> that was a great introduction. You've been doing a great job. Thank you. That was a wonderful introduction. I wrote it. <laughs> My name is Jonathan May, and I'm a comedy magician. Ta-da! Because how do you end that sentence other than ta-da? So I get, to be the, uh, I get to be the entertainment for the day. You have all these amazing speakers, all these amazing things that people are talking about. And uh, for years, I started all of my magic shows, whether it was for children or whether it was for adults or corporate venues or after dinner banquets, whatever shows that I do. For years, I started it like this. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a rope. And that was the reaction I got, so I stopped doing it. Yeah. <laughs> But I stopped doing it that, but then for years after that, I made it much more exciting. I got a much better reaction. For years after that, I upgraded the, uh, the opener, and I went, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, this is a yellow rope. <laughs> See, better reaction. But it wasn't good enough, so I stopped doing it, and now I get the best reaction of all for all the shows that I do. Now I've updated it, I've upgraded it, and now I start all of my shows like this. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this is an ordinary yellow rope. I usually applaud. I... Oh, good, good, yes. I'll show you. You know, whenever a magician says this is an ordinary yellow rope, uh, you're adults. You say, yeah, right. He's a magician. He's sneaky. There's something unordinary about that rope. So I'm going to throw it to you. Miss, what's your name? Ellen? I like the way you said that. Ellen? Ellen, catch. Are you cold? Yeah. I know. You're all bundled up. Catch. <laughs> Ellen, I need you to pull on that rope, stretch on that rope, make sure it does not stretch. There's no elastic. There's no tape. There's no glue. There's no sticky stuff. There's no wax. There's no Velcro. There's no super glue. There's no microchips. There's no Bluetooth. There's no Wi-Fi. It's just a rope. Does it stretch? No. no. Right now, there are people in the audience that say, oh, sure, him and Ellen are in cahoots. <laughs> so if you think that there's something funny about that rope, you got to take it up with Ellen. Go ahead and wad up into a ball here. Give it a toss. Thank you very much. On the count of three. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen's inspected the rope. We also need to inspect this. I have this in for you as well. Ellen, this is um, a, a ring, and you, you and your friends can check that out. Notice the spot where it's welded together. It's very important. You can see that that's welded together. It's not a keychain ring. Nothing could slide on. Nothing could slide off. It's just a ring. It's solid. Yes, they use them for horse pulleys or for uh, uh, or horse bridles and barn pulleys. Just a ring. Could you thread the ring on the rope for me, please? Good. See, now we've tripled up. Now if you think there's something funny about the ring, you got to take up the whole front row. I've done all this talking. I haven't done any magic. Would you like to see some magic? Four of you. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> Watch very closely. If we take, oh, it takes a lot of air. <clears throat> If you take a very solid rope and put a very solid ring on it and you tie a very solid knot, you know the very solid ring cannot come off the very solid rope unless, of course, you untie the very solid knot. Now, we're not going to untie the very solid knot because that would not be amazing, would it? <laughs> no. So instead, I'll just hook my thumb under it, I'll wiggle my thumbs, and like a puzzle, it comes right off. Thank you. I like this lady. If Angela ever retires, you can be my agent with that kind of enthusiasm. Now, once the ring goes off, it has to go back on. How do you get it to go back on? Ask me how. how? I'm glad you asked. You throw it like this. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> now, once it's on, actually what you could do is uh, you could take these out. You know what these are. This is a magic show. Scissors, that's right. You can take it, you can give it a little snip. They work. Now, you have two pieces of rope tied together. I'm going to pick this up here. If I'm lucky, I'll get a few pieces of glass. <laughs> two pieces of rope tied together. You can tell they're two pieces of rope because, uh, well, there's four ends. If I were to untie the two pieces of rope, that gives us four ends, two ropes, which is impossible because we started with one. Ta-da! <laughs> Thank you. I know what you're thinking. Not all of you are applauding, and trust me, I know which ones you are. You're thinking, Jonathan said he was going to do the trick with one piece of rope. He's quite obviously using two. So let's even out the ropes. Uh, let's see, I'll put rope number one over there, put rope number two over there. That gives us two ropes that are even. On that side, it's pretty obvious that the top rope is still way too short. Until, of course, you wiggle your thumbs. And us magicians, you know, we like to do that. 
Yeah, go ahead. It's a magic show. You can regress. I know you want to. Wiggle your thumbs. You don't know anybody here. It feels good, doesn't it? It feels magical. Ellen's up here going. If you do it just right, you give it a little pull, and that top rope looks to be about the same size as the bottom rope. But that's not how we started, which is why you're not applauding. Because I said I was going to do the trick with one piece of rope, and I have two. No problem. Let's go back to one. One, two, three. Three, two, one piece of rope, just like we started. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a rope. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's all about the ends. I'm an entertainer. I just assume entertain you. Uh, but I am a magician, so I do have to fool you, obviously. But I'll let you on a little secret. If you watch the ends, then I can't fool you. If you watch, well, you're really watching. <laughs> I'll make it easier to watch the ends. I'll just take them off. I'll put them up here. That gives us a bigger problem. Now we have a rope with no ends. <laughs> Now it's just a big loop. It's a big endless loop. Uh, the only thing to do now is to cut or take the ends that we took off a moment ago and add them to about the middle of the rope. Now they're just dangling there. We know they're not really ends. They're just ends that are dangling in the middle of a loop. Until, of course, you wiggle your thumbs. When you wiggle your thumbs, they become ends. <laughs> We're used to the speaker thing. We're used to the TED Talk. Some of you are still looking at me like, and? <laughs> you know, if you take these scissors out again, we can take that rope, we can cut it. That gives us two pieces of rope, even the same time. Now, we've had one. We went to two. Then they were uneven. Then they were even. Then we took the ends off. We had a big loop. We added the ends back on. We went back to one rope. Then we're back to two even ropes. I think there's only one more thing we could do, and that would be to tie the uh, ropes together. Now, if you watch very carefully, very closely, you can see there are four ends. That gives us two ropes. There's uh, end number one, and there's no end number two of rope number one. There's end number one, and there's end number two of rope number two. It's these ends in the middle that you have to watch. You see, there's a knot, and there's the ends. Matter of fact, let's make sure they're ends. Let's all count together. Here we go. There's one, two. You know the words to this, right? <laughs> okay. It's one, two, three, four. Ooh, very good. Now in Spanish, uno, dos, Tres, cuatro, uh, muy bien. Now in French, uno, wait, un, deux, trois, quatre, oui, oui. <laughs> German, sure, eins, zwei, drei, vier, ja, wohl. Or my favorite, sign language. It's an easy one, you all know that one. It's the ends in the middle you really have to watch. You see, if we start one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, grab the ones in the middle and pull. The ends over this end go over the ends in the middle, and the ends in the middle disappear, leaving just a knot. Now, if you wave it over the knot itself and you put the knot behind your back and pull, the knot disappears, you go right back to one piece of rope. <laughs> Thank you. By the way, this is all I do for an hour in my show, is just this over and over again. <laughs> I'm just serious. Okay. <laughs> you take the ends. There is only one other thing you can do. Ask me what it is. I'm not telling. I'm just kidding. No, you can isolate the ends. We could put them someplace safe, secure, away from any hocusy pocusy type of stuff. I think the way to do that would be to take the ends and put them in my pocket. Can I get a ooh? Fakers. The ends are there, the middle is there. The ends are there, the middle is there. Sing it with me. The ends are there, the middle is there. The ends are there, the middle is there. Stop. Now the ends are there. The middle is there. The big round of applause is here. Hey! <laughs> well, thank you. So you have all of these wonderful speakers, you have all these different messages and all these business things and emotional things, and uh, I get to be the comic relief today and, and at events like that. I get to do the magic, the after dinner shows. Uh, you'll see during lunch, um, when Angela uh, called me a couple weeks ago and asked me to, uh, to help out or to be here and fill in, uh, I'm gonna do some strolling magic, some close-up magic, some card magic during lunch. So if you wanna talk to me or, or talk to uh, uh, Angela or talk to anybody, or if you just wanna see a card trick, flag me down and, and we'll have fun. We don't have a lot of time and I know you wanna network and you wanna meet uh, but I'd love to approach you, do some card tricks, or talk about what I do as far as the, uh, the comedy magic show. Uh, as I said in the introduction, over 400 shows a year, unless it's a COVID year. 
Uh, I went from 400 shows to about 35 shows. So what I did instead was I wrote two books, two uh, motivational biographical books. The first book uh, was a big sellout, and it was called um, Go For It, Bum. When I was a kid, my dad always called me Bum. Uh, so I'd say, Dad, I want to be a magician when I grow up. Dad would say, go for it, bum. And so I, I wrote a book called Go For It, Bum, How I Was Living My Dream, How COVID Took It Away, and How I Got It All Back. And so that was a big hit. And so I, I wrote another uh, book. Uh, the follow-up to that was called Don't Tell Me What to Do, how to, how to Be You in a World That Wants You to Be Them. And again, kind of a motivational thing in my journey of magic. And I took all those common stories you get of how did you become a magician? Was your dad a magician? Do you go to school for a magician? What was the first trick you learned? And how I built all of that in and uh, to being a full-time professional traveling magician. So I'd love to talk to you. We'll do some card tricks at lunch. But until then, thank you, everybody, for letting me be part of your morning. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.